So we're well into September now and I just thought I'd do another little walk around the borders because time's moving on now and we're not far from um, from a autumn kicking in and I just wanted to see what's going on in my garden so I thought I'd just bring you around for a little look. Um, this is an aster and it's turbinalis. It's only tiny at the moment, but it's starting to flower. It's got a very nice little uh, flower on it. It's not much to look at at the moment, but it's still a young plant. Here's my nursery bed, really, where I keep most of my plants and all my nursery stock. Uh, just thought I'd show you this as well. This is Bruce Glabra lanciniata, and it's a little bit better than... Uh, Bruce, the ordinary Bruce Typhina that you see around. And the reason it's better is because it's just got a better look about it. Uh, and it has a better colour as well. And it, it just looks good. Without showing you the other type, I can't really prove that. But it's starting to kick in with some of its autumn colours and they're looking really good. And that's what it's going to do. The whole plant's going to do that. And that's why I like this one. Because it's, uh, it's a lot nicer than the ordinary one. We've got a bench full of plants here. I'm doing a a talk. I do garden talks and I do uh, garden club talks. And I've got one on Friday, so I've had to get all this stuff together because people like to buy things off you. When you waffle on as much as I do, they like to uh, they like to buy little bits and bobs off you. So I I always take a lot of stuff around with me. So this is the new area that we're still working on, obviously. And this is uh, Canaria, Helenium Canaria. And it's only about a foot and a half, maybe. But it's still flowering. I am going to move that, and I'm going to move this as well. I'm giving that uh, to a friend of mine, Sam, at Bardney Manor in Lincolnshire. And, and I'm actually going to pass that one on to her, because I've got two or three of that variety of Miscanthus, which is Malapartus. And it doesn't really do very well there, so I've decided to move it. Now, this is the Eupatorium Gateway, and it's... Looking a bit floppy at the minute. I'm going to give it some uh, water. Although we're at the end of the season for it, I've recently moved it. Uh, and it's uh, moving, it's uh, drooping its leaves a little bit. And this is Miscanthus memory. And it's fantastic. I love it. Look at that. I mean, if I'm going to tell you to get any Miscanthus at all, I'm going to tell you to get that one. It's just been stunning from uh, the moment it pushed up its first flowers or seed heads. So this area is in uh, development at the minute, so there's not a lot to show you here. But again, I'll show you this millennia. This one's called Pont de Say, and it's been moved from the bottom bed up to here, and it's going to work better here, because it has this annoying drooping habit, which I quite like, but it really needs its own space. And it needs a big space, as you can see. Uh, so I've decided I'm going to try it there. If it doesn't work there, then we've got to have a serious rethink about that. So one thing that's going to start shining out in winter is these euphorbias. And this one's just a seedling. It's just a seedling that I picked up from uh, from um, where did I pick that one up? Some house I was working at and they had loads of them. But in autumn and winter these become invaluable because they're evergreen. So they do really, really well. And it's just an ordinary type, whereas this one is the Bob Brown strain. And I kind of picked on it last year because I bought it and it seemed to have, uh, it seemed to not look that good. But it's now uh, impressed me because it's uh, getting its feet in. And I've moved it at least four times. I'm, a, I'm a, a bugger for moving stuff, but that's what I do. I'm always re-evaluating, changing things. And that's looking great. That's the quartered area. The pampas grass, and that is looking fantastic. Uh, that's one of the smaller ones. And then the new area, the cloister pergola, is looking good. So this area is the bit that I'm going to put into development, as I've said. I'm probably repeating myself things that I've said plenty of times. But hey, what well, you know, does it matter? So this border is looking great, and that sort of trichome is looking great. 
and especially next to this miscanthus. This is Garna, and it's a really nice miscanthus, that. It has this uh, rusty look in the leaf, and that's from the word go as well. And it has a lovely, lovely deep red flower of wine, a, a wine red flower, I guess. So the other symphotrichums that's doing well is that Marina Wolkonski that I keep telling you all to get, and it's really nice. Um, I'm going to have a little bit of a move around with that because I'm I'm trying to get this border uh, into more of an order. And at the moment, I can't decide how I'm going to do that. I am going to move some of the yellow plants away and try and clump them up together. But then I've got a fear and a danger of uh, the purples taking over. Because you've got to remember, I've got this kind of thing going on. There's some more miscanthus and uh, this one's Cascade. That one's Malapartus. And then we've got another one here called uh, Rot Silver, Red and Silver, that means. They all pretty much look the same to you, lot. <laughs> I appreciate that, but they're not. Uh, they're totally different. So it's nearly time for the Aeoniums to go in. We had a bit of an accident the other day. Someone came along, knocked them all, all over the place, did a bit of damage. But that's the way it goes. Uh, this is a Restio. Uh, I'm not going to put that away. I'm going to leave that out because it's been left out for the last two or three years and it's been absolutely okay in its pot. Whereas this one here, I won't. This is Muhlenbergia demosa. And I don't leave that out because it just will not like it. The bamboo's doing okay as well. The Fargesis, I only, I only collect Fargesis really. Or that type, the clump type, the clumping types. Now this is the grass and this is the reason that I put it into its cage. It's massive. It's 12 foot at the moment. Now, last year it only did 12 foot, but I suspect next year it'll be better because I moved it again, so it's, uh, it hasn't got its feet in yet. Another nice little grass is this here. This is Penicetum macrorum. And it's just a good doer. You've got to be very careful of it because it seeds around quite profusely. But as I've said before, there's no such thing as an invasive plant, only a bad gardener who doesn't know how to control them. More symphotrichums. This one's Calliope, and it's got the black, the black stems, and it's really, really nice. And again, a bee magnet, as you can see. Uh, and this is the secret gardening bit that's not quite secret still. Um, and that's the Anderson, the Anderson, <clears throat> the Anderson Shelter Arbor Seat, I'm calling that one. And it's a, a bit of a nod to the local RAF station that we've got going on. And this is what it's like from within it. And this is the view we get. So that's really nice. And that's just a, it's just an arch really. I call it my pillbox. I like to give everything a little name. And over time, there's uh, going to be plants growing over that as well. So it'll not be so standout-ish. As we get going and hopefully these viburnums will take over the bamboo here and another far juice here will all help to shade off this area or make it more secret still time we're putting in some sort of a fence there but we shall see this pavosky has been doing absolutely fantastic it's a good five foot tall now that it was already here when we came it still looks good this area here i'm really happy with this is my shack as you probably are all, all aware i've uh, done a few youtubes on that if you want to look them out and we've got this here this is cercium tuberosum that not a lot of people are familiar with and it will sell um, seed around but again look pollinators invaluable for pollinators so there's still quite a lot of colour in this garden and the grasses are helping as well. And they're doing well. The Ilitelophiums or the Sedums, they're looking good. And then my Miscanthus, it's Miscanthus season. So I've got some absolutely belting Miscanthus going on here. This one's named after Beth Chateau. It's a nice one. And that one there's the one I keep going on about. Cheugensis is really nice. And this is one of the Gigantius types. This is Jubilaris, that's 10, 12 foot. And that's been looking good all season. And there's so many different things going on in this border. This is my little Miscanthus that I've been talking about, and it's, uh, 
it's not failing to perform again. So I've, I've got some great expectations for this one. It's very small, very diminutive. And its working name is uh, Sprite at the moment. So we'll see how that goes. Oh, this, look at this. All right, this poppy has been hit with a lawnmower several times. And then eventually I gave up hitting, with, hitting it with a lawnmower because it, uh, it didn't want to give up. So I thought, oh, let's give it a chance then. But I did have the Shirley series in this border here, all over here. And uh, there's loads in there again. And I've had, to, um, I'd have to, I've had to start taking a bit of action because there's just way too many for next year, way too many. But I've decided to keep this one. Oh, this, this isn't a true Shirley poppy. It's still nice and it just keeps flowering. It's got possibly 30 new heads ready to show and it just keeps going, won't stop. So God knows what that is. Uh, we're getting some autumn colour coming up here as well. This is an Acer. It's called Aconitifolium and it's really, really good and it's got loads of little seed heads. I'm going to try and grow them this year. And this is a... Brunera, and it's a self-set. I'm leaving that one alone. My favourite one is this one over here. That's Alexander's Great, and it's going into autumn colours now. It's doing all right. So you can see the garden's looking pretty good. And then we've got things like uh, this Clasia Bulgarica. It's a bit of a thistle. It has pure white seed heads, it's beautiful. And it's been looking good, but it's a sterile form, so it's never gonna set any seeds. Now, one mistake I made here, this is Lamprophyasis, and it's beautiful. It produces a beautiful seed head. Looks really good, but I've put this Ilotelophim here, which is called Brilliant, and it's pink. There's, I think there's three in there, but I've decided it's got to be moved because it's getting spoiled there. I really could do with it there because I've got quite a few grasses in here and I wanted to break them up, but you know, you've got to accept that that's just not going to work long term. I've got Pittosporum back there and I, all, not all Pittosporums are hardy in the UK. In fact, most of them are not because of the New Zealand shrubs. Um, but this is called Garnetii and I've had this in previous gardens and it's always proved to be the hardies for me, but it's too close to this Nifophia. So when I finish filming this, Believe it or not, I'm going to move it. And uh, I'm going to dig a big hole, just about there. And I'm going to just put it there. And hopefully that's going to take well. It's at the right time of the year. It's an evergreen. So any time of the year, really, with evergreens. Flipping neck, wow, Lampophysis is doing well. Uh, the Sorbuses are starting to come into autumn colour as well now as well. They're doing all right. In fact, I've just kicked the best one off. That colour there <laughs> just fell off as I caught it. Anyway, that one's Sorbus uh, scalarius. If you're looking for a sort of a flat-headed type Sorbus that don't get too tall, maybe consider that one. So another seating area with lots going on. got to remember to keep pushing this up I keep forgetting I need to give it some support it's the clematis and it keeps dropping and I keep pushing it back up but it's it's doing okay then we got I just got the scent of something then I just realized it's this and again I keep forgetting about these I've got to tie them up because these are climbers and this is called the generous gardener and so it is it's got a lovely scent mm, yeah not strong but it's okay Again, we've got Melinias here doing the thing. This one's, um, it's a, a Corulia subspecies of Rundinacea and it's, uh, it's Carl Forster. So it's named after the great plantsman Carl Forster, as is the Calamagrostis that I talk about often. That's been doing really well this year, that, that's fennel. Ordinary bronze fennel, can you believe it? It has done so fantastic. The downside to that one, seeds everywhere. But, you know, I'll deal with that. I found a few seedlings around. I give them away as well. We've got an Achillea here. I'm trying to think of its name. Uh, I can't remember its name. But it's, uh, 
It's an Ernst Pagels one. Or it's really, really nice, that. And then there's a grass back there, a miscanthus, that's got to yet set its seed. What can we show you up here? So, yeah, the Isle of Telephemes are doing really well. So, invaluable for, you know, late season pollinators. Well, we're only in September, but, you know, we are late season, really. But they're doing really well. This is what I call the birch border for obvious reasons. This birch has never really settled in. It's, uh, it's called Silver Shadow. Very hard to get hold of this one. But I had it in a pot for years. And I do not think it's helped it at all. But another year in here and hopefully it'll be okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put some plant grow mulch onto that and see if we can get that one into uh, kicked into action. This selenium, we don't know the name of it. But it's not stopped flowering for months. It just keeps going, so it's really, really nice. This little one down here, this grass-like one, is Asphodeline lutea. Uh, and it's actually starting its growth for next year, believe it or not. Here's a self-set Verbena bonariensis. Just did a YouTube, that's another one. In fact, every YouTube, um, sorry, every Verbena that I've got in this garden now all came from this original one, that one there. And finally, I can't believe this, that these are finally flowering for me. It's a penicetum. Don't know where it is. A friend gave me it because it's never flowered for her. And then I bought another one, and I can't remember the name of it. But it's got a lovely, lovely seed head coming up. So hopefully that'll do well. So this board is looking really nice. This, this plant here is fantastic. I've got two others that I'm going to put down next to the wildlife area once we put the pond in. And it is a reed. And it's massive. And it doesn't run. It's huge. It's a very nice one, that. I'm trying to get in to see where the stem... Oh, here we go. Look at this. Look at the size of these stems. Oops. These stems are massive. They're absolutely huge. And it's a rundo donax, this particular one. And they're massive. And I've left all the old stems on this year. And they've, uh, they've rewarded me by coming back with more leaves on them. So it's macrophylla. And it refers to the leaves being really big and huge. Huge great leaves. Let's put my hand next to it. Look at that. So that is almost as big as my hand. That leaf. It's fantastic. It's well worth getting hold of that one. So, that's a nice little walk there, 18 minutes, I've exceeded myself, I don't like to go on too long because I know you'll get bored after a while, but it's looking really nice, so I just thought I'd give you a little pootle around grassy bottom, see what's going on, and it's all looking good, I'm very happy with it. And that's soon to be the wildlife pond. Looks fantastic. And this new area that's going to be de developed here is uh, quite exciting. So let's see what happens there. And that's it, really. So that's just a general look at Grassy Bottom. Just a quick view. And we'll end it there. Hope you've enjoyed that. Little walk around, little poodle. I do this every, um, every night, actually. I walk around this garden every single night, as you can imagine. And I wait till the sun goes down, usually. But just before we lose the last light, I like to have a walk around, view it differently. And it's fantastic. And you should try and do that if you can. Get yourself walking around the garden. I love it. Trouble is, I always come up with new ideas when I'm doing it. Sometimes I pray for rain, so it keeps me in the house. <laughs> but it's not raining today, but apparently we're going to get some in the next couple of days. And let's face it, our gardens need it again. All right, hope you've enjoyed that. I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da!